Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to uh, the Youth Connect Hangout, uh, hosted by Ministry of Youth and ICT. Uh, we are joined by uh, uh, friends from Huye. Uh, they will be with us this, this evening as we, we go through this session. Uh, I will quickly request um, my fellow panelists to introduce themselves, uh, and then we'll move on quickly to this session. Uh, which is around innovation and entrepreneurship. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, dear followers and uh, the colleagues. Uh, I'm called Gordon Karema, uh, I work with the Minister of Youth and ICT. Specifically, I'm in charge of uh, e-government service coordination. Good evening. I'm uh, Boyo Silvi. I'm the ICT director at the College of Science and Technology at the University of Rwanda. Um, <coughs> I'm Jean Yotwadira. I'm uh, the CEO and founder of Talk Limited, uh, a Rwandan software development company that creates software for small and medium enterprises. Uh, good evening, uh, dear followers. Good evening, future entrepreneurs. Uh, my name is Jean Claude Nibizi. I'm the managing director of Mopas Limited, uh, a company of media and communications consultants. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think you can see we have quite uh, a diverse panel with us here. Uh, I won't forget to introduce myself. My name is Martin Carlos Muizergua. I am the Chief Marketing Officer of Africa Ole Services. Um, so quickly, um, I think I'll start with the, with the government. We always like to, to tease the government, so I'll, I'll go with him first. Uh, in this uh, innovation and entrepreneurship space, um, th there's a lot that has been done. Uh, we, see, we see a lot of things on TV, we see a lot of things uh, uh, happening around us. Um, but I want to know, from your perspective, uh, what is your global take on innovation and entrepreneurship in Rwanda? Uh, what what orientation do you have? What uh, what perspective do you think uh, we should be we should be following uh, as Rwanda? Um, thank you so much, moderator, for the opportunity. Um, dear future entrepreneurs, once again, uh, it's a privilege to interact and share thoughts about what we collectively need to do to pursue this development agenda as youth. Uh, it's a very good question and actually uh, I would be wearing two hats, one for the government because I work with the ministry here, but um, I would actually love to speak as a youth would love to be an entrepreneur at the same time. Now, um, again, I would love to throw back the question because if I speak as the government, um, I'm the implementer. But I think it would be more convincing and more relevant if the beneficiaries tell the story themselves. So you help me. You help me actually to validate if what I'll be saying. Um, now, to, to, to bring this into a perspective, um, as the ministry, as the government, I would say, first of all, this is your home. Uh, whenever you're in Kigali, please pass by. Uh, our mandate is mainly to do the orientation at uh, a policy level, as you said. And what we do is to put up the policies themselves. And these policies should do usually be geared towards uh, giving a conducive environment to the youth. Uh, I'm talking about 78.7% uh, of the people from 0 to uh, 35 years of age. That's the age bracket. And I think that's actually the majority of the Rwanda, yeah, from 0. Now, that gives us an opportunity. So what we do as the ministry that is in charge of uh, the youth, like I said, is to create uh, a conducive environment. And here we shall specifically give uh, a few examples. And then you talk about the rest yourselves. 
Um, one, I would say, in regards to creating the conducive environment, we look at um, having the youth mobilized first of all. Uh, as you know, uh, initially we had a situation whereby uh, somebody would be born, you grow, you pass through all the stages of lifespan, somebody dies without an identity or a belonging somewhere, in terms of uh, maybe association, maybe belonging to a church somewhere, and used to happen. So, what we do as the ministry is to make sure that actually there is a belonging for everyone. Umunuru Jiruko belongs to somewhere. That's the first thing. Now, the, the, the other level, just to be quick and give an opportunity to my, my, my fellow colleagues, is now to create opportunities in a way of trying to link uh, the beneficiaries who are the youth and the people who may have the opportunities. Now, I'm talking about now uh, the potential investors. Uh, we have people who are graduating from schools. They have skills, and they are so brilliant and intelligent. Now, what happens is to, like I said, to bring opportunities that translate the brains into actual benefit. That's now I'm talking about the business. Now we have incubation centers. Now I'll give examples and uh, I think for my colleagues who are already here, they will tell their stories how they've had a transition from the ideation level to a business until they become CEOs. If they were CEOs, they were just CEO of ideas, but now they are CEOs of businesses. So we have them. We can give examples. I think uh, you, you know most of them. Uh, the Think, the K-Lab, and we are trying even to build uh, a very wider one uh, the, 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 uh, at Kichuchilo. So all these uh, uh, avenues to create opportunities. Uh, the other thing I would talk about is to be able to give opportunities to access to finance, whereby we can negotiate and collaborate with other partners who become part of our targets, of our mission. You know, when you have the right people with you, then you're safe. If you don't have the right people, you're not safe. So I'm bringing this into a wider perspective without being so specific examples because I know you're sure you, you know them and you've examples yourselves. So mainly, uh, moderator, that's what you do, in charge of the youth, you have to make sure that the youth, they are still in the road, but they, they are still in the journey and they are moving together. And because as runs as the youth to make sure that nobody gives us. If there is no if there is no one going astray, we bring our back with the collective back together. Uh, sorry is what we do without getting to defend you so much. Uh, thank you, Bon. I have a question from here with us at this point. I'm going to ask uh, uh, the CEO talk to, to validate a little bit of what Golan has said. Uh, really be part of instead of uh, uh, maybe 
of following in any other uh, directions. I, I give examples of uh, like the impact that K-Lab itself had on me. Uh, right uh, before I, I graduated from KIST, uh, K-Lab was, I heard of K-Lab and uh, I, I truly thought that I possessed uh, enough skills that, and that I really needed um, the right people to recognize that I was able to do what I, I claimed to so Caleb was for me uh, a way to really test if I was right or, or wrong and luckily enough uh, I went to Caleb with an idea and uh, one year and a half after I graduated from Caleb with um, with a product on the market and the product was making money so I, I believe that we have um, we are we were born in really lucky era like our era is really good and that is this environment that is Rwanda is really creating uh, a lot of opportunities and a lot of entrepreneurs are, are to be seen very soon okay thank you uh, Jean. Um, before I go to the academia let me jump quickly to, to Jean-Claude uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts on especially what you know the government story uh, what they have been doing, but it's also important to validate whatever they have been doing uh, and then also see what can they do better uh, that would actually impact or transform what your business uh, is going through. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me give you just a little bit of the story of my journey to business. Uh, number one is that the government is in, in the right way to create uh, jobs for youth. Um, and if I can refer to what Gordon said, it is really good for the youth, like like uh, the young people who are still at the university. When you belong to some to, to some organizations, you get an opportunity to get linked to other people, different minds, uh, you know, different experiences. Like myself, I belong to the private sector federation. So in the federation, uh, when you are there, you get uh, people that you share the same field. You can be maybe an IT person when you're in the federation. You get a lot of people who have different experiences in IT. So from there, you can you can maybe ask one of them, uh, what is going on? What is the opportunity? What can I do? Can you mentor me? So in a, in an organization, in an association, you get really um, help. You get a lot of support that you do not expect to have. Uh, if I can give the opportunity and uh, the good thing of being uh, an entrepreneur. Uh, I can remember when I started my, my first job, uh, seriously, let me tell you, I was getting uh, 600,000. I was very young in uh, 2007. It was so amazing, I was, I was getting $1,000. It was a lot of money. But I remember one time when uh, my boss came and said, hey Jean-Claude, uh, you know, you are getting a lot of money and I don't see the work you're doing, you know, uh, equal to the salary you're getting. I said, ah, come on, I work from the morning and I'm trying my best. So let alone I said, you know what, I have now to, to, to quit my job and I think I'm going to get more money. I'm going to tell now to the youth that if you restart the, youth, the journey of uh, entrepreneurship, you're going to get a lot of money, you're going to be uh, innovative because you want to grow every time as the competition comes in. So um, come back to the story, I remember I started uh, earning 70,000 francs, it was so amazing, I said, oh my God, I left my job, I was getting $1,000, then I'm getting 70,000, I'm dying now. So the first month, the second month, uh, I earn seventy thousand, then thirty thousand. But like in the third month, I got a very big job as people start to see that I can do something. I'm telling the truth; it's not, it's not, uh, it's not magic. The first big job I got, I got eight million dollars in francs. I said, oh, eight million dollars in francs. Then I started calculating and take a thousand dollars. I know eight millions divided by one thousand dollars. Said ah, entrepreneurship is good. So when you work by your own, number one, you 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 get linked to a different people and a huge number of people with different experiences. So it opens your ways. And as you work, 
and you meet uh, competition, you, you want always, you know, to innovate, to go higher and higher and higher and higher. So um, that's just in a brief uh, a story that I can share with you. So when you finish your university, you don't have just to run, 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 give me a job application, give me not every day like that. When you come in entrepreneurship, just come, you're going to get uh, nice opportunities and technologies come in. Uh, I think uh, the government of Rwanda is it's good. Congratulations to the Minister of ICT and Youth. You are doing a good job. I hope we speak Thank you, Martin. Language. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I'm going to come back to you. Um, you make it sound very easy. You make it sound like, you know, leave your job, go for, you know, entrepreneurship and you get 80 million. So think about how you're going to explain to them the difficulties of that journey. I, I know it's not very easy. Uh, of course, when you get to the end, it's easy. Uh, but I'll come back to you with that question. I want to bring in the academia. We are talking about um, innovation and entrepreneurship, especially to people who are at, at the university. Um, I want to hear from you. How, what do you see the role of the academia in in this space, and what what programs and initiatives do you have that you're running currently to support this? Thank you. I'll start by telling telling you that um, as an educator or a parent, you are always proud when your children are progressing in any area of their life. So I start that by uh, that I'm proud that we have a product from our institution. So the aim, our main objective at the university is to educate excellence in academy, academics, then we have research, and then community service. Those are our main goal. So we teach students, we give them, give them skill they need, and then we do research. But we have uh, realized that is not enough for the students. Because after leaving the university, the number of uh, graduates we are producing, normally we expect that them to be employed or to be job creators. But we don't see that because you can find after some years that student you have taught is there without a job. And that hurts. So there are some initiatives and projects that are going on to respond to that problem. So at the university, this is from the College of Science and Technology, there are some initiatives that are running presently, like mentorship. In mentorship, what we do, we make sure that lectures do mentor students. Because we found that what the students are lacking is that conducive environment, having someone they can talk to, someone who can give them information about project and so on, the real life. Otherwise, they are isolated. So there's this mentorship done by um, academics, lecturers. And then there are some specific rooms where we have to make sure that room is open and there's someone there, a lecturer. If a student has a problem, he can't come and then talk to the lecturer. Not only regarding the courses, but just if you have question you have someone to answer to it. So we have, the, we have set up another system. We call it uh, early warning system. This is mainly uh, academic. Where well, we need to see the progress of the student, how students are performing. Because if you want to be competitive out there, you need to have skills that you bring out. So we want, in this early warning system, help both students and lecturers to know who is following, who is not following. So if there is an assignment, you have to follow up how students are performing. And then those who are lagging behind, you make sure that you take care of them. On top of that then, currently each school should set up an incubation, an incubation center where different projects will be discussed and where students will be 
will go and do some project and uh, discuss with others. And we think that if that what I have said above is done properly, student will be well equipped to go outside. Now, and we know that maybe that can solve a certain percentage of the problem, but not all. On top of that, we need also at the university or the college to help students continue out of the university. There we are planning to have some workshop that will be linking the private sector, especially industries, with the university. You can ask yourself why do we need that? Those people ask outside, they, are the, they better know the need that is out there compared to the university. If it happens that they come with a need to the university, our student will be more exposed to solve real problems. Another thing is to revive the alumni. Especially this is, a, um, is about the role models. We have some students who have performed well, who are good, like the two here. So if our alumni is strong, you have your young, your elders who will take care of you and then guide you in this journey, tell you what is going on. So it's a matter of linking students in the university and those who are outside to have a synergy. Another thing is that we think that innovation is not done at the early stage when students are joining the university. So what will happen is that, and this is uh, my recommendation, you should start by thinking of your project when you join the, the university and start working on it. Because the industry or the industry or people outside, what they need is what you are capable of. So if a student can leave the university or when they're at the, at the university have prototypes call, uh, from the project and then they produce prototypes, that will be easy for you because it's very easy to commercialize a prototype because it's something workable and something you can sell. Yeah, in brief, these are projects that are going on and uh, we hope that this will help not to solve the problem because anywhere in the world we don't expect that everyone will be employed yeah. because even when you follow news, this is the thing that is always said that people are not employed, they don't have a job, but we expect that it will be a great contribution to allow students, to, to allow youth get job and create job. Thank you. Right. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Sylvie. Uh, I'll come back to you one of the questions. Um, you, you talked about uh, the mentorship from lecturers. Uh, some of us, maybe, you know, the guys from Huye will, will tell me, some of us, as soon as the lecture was done, we, we, we run as fast as we could from, from the lecturer. So I'm just wondering, maybe times have changed, but uh, the only thing you wanted from the lecturer was good marks. And also the fact that as little as he knows about you is good for you. So uh, maybe things have changed and, and that's a, a new approach. Uh, I'm going to come back to, to Jacques-Claude, the question that I asked. Uh, it's easier said than done, in my opinion. Um, and probably you want to share a little bit more about your challenges uh, and share as well. Uh, with moving away from the traditional finish university, look for a job, you know, uh, and salary, you know, what, what you call the rat race. Uh, what you're seeing is move out of the rat race and, you know, find your own piece of cheese. So just explain to us a little bit some of the challenges so that the youth out there know exactly what it is uh, that, that they are looking at, especially the guys in Huye. 
uh, because you know Hui and Kigali might not you know necessarily be contextually the same, uh, and the influences you know might be different. So uh, just answer that question, and then in a short while, uh, we'll bring in uh, the guys from Hui to ask the panelists here a couple of questions. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this is great as I'm sharing with uh, my young brothers and sisters in Hui. Also, me, me, I, I also am graduated from National University of Rwanda. So as you are, as you are talking about that, uh, I was coming from uh, from the university. I go out, uh, uh, then I go in town a little bit. If I knew that I met the lecturer, I'm, I can say I'm safe. Now I regain my my average max. So, um, if I can come back to your question, the first challenge I got uh, actually. It is linking to, 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 to the policies from KIST. The first challenge that we get as students, the one I got when I finished school and go outside, it was that I was only deep in theoretical uh, knowledge. Eh? I know theories, I know philosophers, I know all of those social uh, literature, all of those things. I remember as I'm in the field of communications, I went outside and uh, I went in one of the ministries, I was typing to get a lot of money, and they asked me, do you know what a backdrop banner is? I said, what is a backdrop banner? I did four years at the university, I did communications, but I don't know what a backdrop banner is. So the first challenge that we get when we're still at school and when we, go out, when we go out of the school is that we only have, you know, theory, th theories. And they're pumping us with the literature, but when you go outside, you see yourself, you know, blind. You, you, you don't know where you're going. They tell you something and you, you get lost. Because when I come out of the university, I get people from Kenya, from Uganda. When I meet them at, at the market, they would, they would ask me, go and do something for us. And I say, what is that? Then somebody from Uganda, because of the experience, would come and say, hey, hey, I'm going to do that. You see, then I was losing jobs like that. So that's the only challenge that I met, the prominent one that really shocked me in my 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 starting uh, journey of business. I only had literature, and it's going to be good really if kids you start like that in your room of uh, uh, mentorship room or something. Try to call also private sector people because they have experiences, because the the, the director who's there. He will tell the student, you know, the theory says A, B, C, D. The, the, the philosophy is this and this and this and this. But he doesn't have really the, the actual problem outside. So if you call like me or, or, or this man beside me, of course you pay me for consultants. <laughs> I'm a businessman, but I help until the student to know what is what is what is happening outside. I give them the real experience. They know where to start by, how to just a company, how to, 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 to go for, for public tenders, how do you negotiate uh, Ichiraka. Huh? So all of those stories, I think uh, I shared a little bit of uh, the challenge I had. It is really, uh, I only had only literature, philosophy. I had so many philosophers in my mind, but on the actual site, I had nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I think I'm going to I'm going to cue in um, our friends from Huye. Uh, if you have any questions for for the panelists here, uh, just a quick reminder: we have uh, Mr. Gordon uh, Kalema uh, from the Ministry of Youth and ICT. Uh, we have uh, Ms. Sylvie Moyo from uh, um, College of Science and Technology. Uh, I still call it KIST in my head. Uh, we have Jean Nyotwajira, yes, uh, CEO of Talk, and uh, Jean Claude Nivizi. Yes. Uh, so if you have any questions for them uh, and myself as well, uh, although I try to remain quiet, uh, please go ahead and, and send them through. Uh, thank you. Uh, do we have uh, any questions? Yes, thank please. Thank you so much. Um, and my name is of course Singa Jessica. On oh, my fellow, student, fellow fellow intellectuals, I would like to thank you for the time sacrificed to us on how we can contribute to the innovation of ICT and entrepreneurship layout on our motherland. We are so grateful to be part of you as youth. So allow me to be to, to be minimize the time. Allow me to pass this opportunity to the fellows and pass out the 
ideas, the burning ideas and problems as the, the ones that are facing. Thank you so much. Anyone with a question? They want to ask questions. Thank you so much. My name is Jeff Tuishime, a student in the Business and Information Technology Level 4 from University of Rwanda College of Business and Economics, Huye Campus. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one is goes to my ICT and the other one to the private sector. I think there's a correspondent down there. Okay. Uh, the first question is, when we are here in university, 70% of the studies that we, we, uh, we get from here is based on theory. And I'm asking this question to the my ICT. Uh, either they can do like um, just connect students to RDB. They used to give uh, the, the professional internship after studies, after graduating. And uh, this internship, it has to be taken within six months, I think. And uh, this six months will really give a good practical knowledge or a proficient to a student in order to go to compute outside on the market. Uh, that was the first question. I think he got the point. Okay. The second question is to the man uh, with, uh, from PSF, right? We are two. <laughs> uh, two. Who is on this one or me? You, you hold the mic. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, is please come to our campus and do public lecturing. Tell us uh, in deep your really journey in business doing the challenges, and we really have some tough ideas so that you can go outside and work on it. So come and tell us the challenges, the opportunities, uh, so that we can go and, and utilize it. We don't want to test the deep of water with two legs. Please come tell us. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Wasi Rachel. I'm a student in international relations. I, it's not questions, but more of suggestions about mentorship, creating a system, and uh, I'll be telling you about the fear we have as young people. So the first thing is, let me start by the fear. Young people nowadays, we fear of being stolen our ideas. We have some good ideas, but you are like, what if I tell it to someone who is well placed in the government and use it before me because I don't have means? That's the first thing. The second thing is uh, I'm addressing to the ministry, help us creating a system. As you said, we are somewhere in the university, far away from the town, far away from the reality, sitting on the chair learning about theories. So what we want is when we get out, who are we going to talk to? If I heard well, he as in the, the businessman, he said whenever he wants to share his experience in deep, you have to pay him for that. Yeah, sure. That's called sentence, so he emphasized. But my question is, with which money are we going to pay him to have his experiences? But if you create, us, if you create for us a system where we can have access to those people, to those people easily without having to pay, I guess it will be more easier. And another thing addressing to my colleague, it's about um, this thing of we want to have internships and we also want to be paid. We want to be volunteers and we also want to be paid. We want to get experience and we want to be paid for that. So I think as the Ministry of Youth and ICT, you should not only making awareness about uh, being innovative,
but making people understand that gaining experience it's like learning we pay school fees to learn we don't get paid to learn so emphasis on uh, volunteering and internships in terms of gaining experience instead of being innovative having ideas which will not move in any way the last thing is about mentorship i'm sorry to say this but mentorship in rwanda it's it's something else i'm speaking from experience mentorship normally it's someone who gives you time someone who listen to you and someone who is ready to train you and punish you when necessary but we don't have that in Rwanda in Rwanda mentorship is that person who call you call the person and is like sorry i'm in a meeting so can i meet you i won't be around i'm on a leave so can we have a meeting i'm very sorry can we do that on skype a mentor is like a father you have to run to him when you think when you are stuck on something you run to him when you need something you run to him when you are short of ideas you run to him when you want connections so i guess mentorship before being implemented should have another perspective and by the way lecturers at the university they are not that good motivated to be good mentors because what they do they work a lot and after working teaching four classes at uh, six different universities and having time for more than 20 students to mentor them trust me it's not something easy thank you Thank you very much. I'm called Moses Mutavaz. I'm a fourth year student doing international economics at the University of Rwanda Way campus. I wish to thank our panelists for their time. Um, I had uh, some few questions but I'll not ask. I have um, I wanted to say some few ideas and maybe recommendations. Um, my requests and recommendations go to the Ministry of Youth and ICT. I'm um, aware there are panelists from that ministry. There is a gap, and I'm thinking of uh, the ministry and maybe other responsible stakeholders setting up ICT seasonal camps or academies. In these academies, um, some panelists talked about mentorship. Uh, we really thank you for that but these are not enough. If we start up academies and camps, these camps and academies could bring together people from different perspectives, people from different walks of life with different uh, experiences, to share stories, to share uh, best experiences, to share best practices. In this, we have youth who don't know the, the trends that are current like as you've been saying when you're in school you're in somehow um i'm sorry to say like a prison it's not this form of prison but it's some kind of prison you wake up in the morning you go to class you come back you go like you're, you're in that business you're not exposed to the outside world so if maybe the ministry can set up these seasonal camps or these seasonal academies whereby these young entrepreneurs can meet with maybe ex those who are ex experts in the field to mentor them as they've been talking about to share with them what they can do to see how they can turn these societal problems into real projects i think that can work out the other thing i'd like to request also we are talking about entrepreneurship i want to talk as an economist one of the qualities of successful entrepreneurs is being a risk taker in ICT I also want to relate it with having uh, a digital economy and also digital entrepreneurship since we are talking about ICT and entrepreneurship uh, ideas the youth have a problem of fear of failure so my thinking is if the responsible people and maybe the ministry 
can start up failure aversion campaigns in secondary schools, in universities, even in private and public institutions. We have people who have ideas, but they fear to fail. They say, if I start up this one and fail, this thing looks too big, I can't start it. This thing is just a theory, I can't start it. My God, who am I to do this? Who am I to start up this? Even my great-grandfather didn't do it. Who am I to do this? So, people have ideas, people have dreams, but they fear to start. They have that fear of failure. So, if the response to people can start up these campaigns to overcome and confront these psychological and cultural problems and barriers, I'm sure we can have a digital. As you know, ICT is contributing uh, favorably to the country's GDP. And so I'm sure if we have these ideas turned into projects, we can see a better Rwanda in different aspects. I thank you. Uh, maybe, maybe we could have one more question and then we try to respond to these ones and then we can come back to you again. So please go ahead and ask that question and then... Okay. My name is Kia Gabon Muzi from Sadia Statistics. So my question is, why not when, when we went to university school, why not we didn't start like those internships in Sadia? Why we didn't do it like in first year, second year? Because if we want to learn more like practical, so because we are like abdominal learners, I don't know how to say it, but we want to learn more in practice, not in theory. Because uh, like theory, we didn't do practice well. So my suggestion is, is it possible that from uh, first year, second year, we can do like those internship if it's possible? For let me say on my part as statistician, we do. Uh, it's for one month in third year. We went in fourth year. We do this writing our memory memoir. Okay, so session. I didn't know it in English. Sorry. So I'm asking, we are busy on studying like a theory, but seriously, we need the practical things so that when I went out of university, I can understand the world, my field, the way I can do things around. Another thing I can point on mentorship when I know mentorship, you can say it could be like once per week, but you know, lecturers can't be our mentors as well. Because if I want to be real in statistics or in economics or in a business, but our lecturer maybe he's a good in chemistry, biology, what and the what. If we didn't like uh, business, but he like uh, science, I said, how how he will be, how he or she will be my mentor. So my question uh, or my suggestion is if we plan to have mentor, he or she will be my, my favorite or someone who will understand my idea or ideas of another one. So that is it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, uh, friends from Huye. We will come back to you for additional questions. Let's try to, to address these ones. Uh, the first question I think I will put to uh, to Gordon. Uh, he seems to be already holding the microphone. Uh, the, the question especially you've been asked about um, the, the, the suggestion about the seasonal camps and the academies. Uh, it seems to be a suggestion that you can do more than what you're doing right now. Uh, and also the, the element of internships. It seems to be very, very popular. The way internships are being done at the moment uh, what what is your strategy for that, and how do you respond to them? Uh, okay, thank you so much, uh, moderator, and uh, uh, to the people from Huye. Uh, it's really very interesting <coughs> to see us uh, opening opening to each other. 
and one I will respond as the government but I said uh, on that side I'll respond as uh, a youth. Now uh, let me begin, there are a couple of questions directed to me, I hope uh, I'll be able to answer them, uh, but uh, all these are subject to discussions, even the answer may not be satisfactory. So um, uh, uh, there are about seven and I'll try to merge them into three mainly. Uh, one was related to professional inter internship, yes I do agree. There is a mismatch between what we study in theory and what's on the market. And so one reason why our in internship, conducting a training internship becomes relevant to prepare you and usher you into a world of unknowns. Yeah. So our, this was a program which was started. I think you have heard, you know, you have much information about it. And so this has not stopped. Uh, let me clarify. This has not stopped. Uh, it used to be within RDB, uh, and now it has been moved to NCBS, uh, National Capacity Building. So um, finally, we say it's found its natural home, and it remains open to be harnessed uh, by you people. Uh, now about the fear, you know it's so interesting when you have an idea and you have fear it shouldn't be stolen by someone and then you decide to keep it in your head until you finish your university. I think that's a risk on its own, that's a risk on its own. Uh, I'll respond and say that um, as the government, like I said before, is to create a conducive environment and within that environment we mean having the right people who are employed, I would say. Today, if I wake up in the morning, I come here to work, I'm paid. And I'm paid to facilitate the development process of you and my brothers and my sisters across the country. So what do I mean here? Are, there are people who have the responsibility as the ministry. Uh, we've created uh, levels of uh, youth forums you know, we have institutions, our government has been a champion to put up structures, institutional structures, which are in charge of the youth. You have the ministry, you have the National Youth Council, you have the um, youth representatives across the, the country. I, I know you have even associations within the universities. All that is all about creating an ecosystem of people who could facilitate and push you to the next level. So I think or it wouldn't be a good idea to keep yourself with the idea, uh, a good idea to translate into a business just because you fear. I think part of innovation should be able to think through how you should move from your ideation level to a business uh, level. Meaning, part of your idea, uh, your idea is to protect even your idea. Uh, I hope I'm not confusing anyone here. But so what I'm saying is that um, uh, I think we are, we are open and we've been approaching uh, uh, open to receive many youth with ideas. They've been protected. Uh, when there is a chance to have a potential entrepreneur, they meet. There is Caleb. I don't think the mandate of Caleb is to sell or even steal people's ideas, yet their mandate is really to translate them into business people. So I would really strongly recommend that uh, we move away from that uh, perspective and become open to interact. That's how business conducted, I understand. Uh, the other thing is creating a system and I can tie it with the mentorship. Uh, I think this was a recommendation, Maurice, it's not a question. Uh, yes, uh, mentorship, uh, which goes with uh, internship. Uh, in Rwanda we have people who could mentor, if I would say. Did you know that even you yourself, you can mentor a colleague? Mentorship doesn't really need to be, to have a discrepancy of uh, the gap between somebody who is old and the young, because even a younger person can be a mentor to a fellow young person. So uh, I think, yes, I would say it's a recommendation we can take and push to a policy formulation which would later translate into a practice. I do agree and I will code it, but at the same time uh, I would still say that uh, uh, there are people, there are people you can approach. Sometimes it doesn't need to be structured that it's an office which gives mentorship. We use the people we have. But I think, again, I would say the ideas that we give 
the ideas that we receive as students, let's say, or as younger entrepreneurs with, uh, with just at a level of ideation, why do we use the knowledge we receive? How do we translate the, 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 the knowledge, the advice we get into a business perspective? I think sometimes we stay stuck. We, we just remain stuck at ideation level and we keep thinking uh, about the, 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 the challenge only. I will just throw it back, uh, back again. Uh, the, the, the challenge to you. Uh, you mentioned, uh, somebody mentioned of um, the program for a seasonal camps or being able to start uh, inter, uh, inter, um, uh, internship programs even at the first year. I know we have structures within universities. We have class representatives, we have uh, guild uh, administration, it goes to the dean, it goes to the principal, there is a system already built. If I can throw back the question, and I don't need the answer from you. Think through in your heart. Did you ever bring this idea to any forum and say, okay, teacher or lecturer, I think if we started this program this way and we begin, we, we embark on a program to start finding opportunities to do internship, this would work better. And then, so I don't need the answer, but I think give the answer to yourself. So what I'm saying, are uh, it all starts with us. It all starts with us finding opportunities, first of all, around the environment we are in, and then transcend into finding other opportunities even before you talk to the government. But again, I will say it's a good recommendation that we can retain, and I think for most of these forums, that's one reason why uh, like this Google Hangout was created, to hear ideas, and we, we, we can commit and say that uh, some of these recommendations will eventually translate into policies that we shall be put into the practice. I think my, I try to summarize and encompass all the questions into one, such that I can give an opportunity to the rest. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Gordon. Um, uh, before I come to, to Sylvie on, on, on the mentorship uh, question, uh, there, there seems to be a lot of uh, uh, feedback on that one. Uh, let, me, let me go to Jean. Uh, the fear of, of of, of losing that intellectual property, uh, which is uh, what Rachel was really asking. Uh, you are in an environment where you're encouraged to share, you know, to throw your idea up there and get feedback. Now, the nature of business is, if I'm sharp, I'll get your idea and I'm quick to market while you're still thinking about it. From your experience, what was that like? Maybe you can share that with, with our friends from Huya. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I think this was a very uh, interesting question to hear and I've, I've heard this a lot about people saying uh, uh, they, they are afraid of um, uh, sharing their ideas. Uh, I, these days I even get uh, young entrepreneurs uh, get me to sign their NDA and they just want an advice for me but they want to sign an NDA. So, um, but I remember a strategy that I thought I had in really in order to protect my idea. Um, and I got this from a mentor who actually I had shared my idea with. And he gave me an example of a shark tank. It was like, imagine that idea of yours is just a small fish that every shark wants to eat. What are you going to do? Um, because only people who can steal your ideas are people who are much more powerful than you. Uh, people who can go to market before you even think about starting writing your first lines of code. And he was, I couldn't get any answer. And it was like, I'm too exposed, but I, I'm not afraid of sharing my idea. Was, if you're not really afraid of sharing your idea, now this is what you need to put in place. Be a shark. Fake it. Don't, don't let people think that your idea is not yet implemented. Share your idea, but like in the background, really give this projection that you've already worked on it. So you really believe in your idea and show them, uh, show whoever you want to share your idea with, that it is impossible for them to really uh, go faster than you. Um, I think I think for me that, that that was only something to block me from having that fear of sharing, and I got a lot of benefit from uh, sharing my idea, especially. Uh, it, 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 maybe I can also go back a little bit to the ment mentor, uh, mentorship uh, thing that people are like, we cannot get mentors. Yes, uh, everyone is not going to be a mentor, 
but it's up to you to locate the right mentors for your idea. So uh, um, it is very important to know uh, the result you want from someone. Uh, don't, don't just go ahead and say I, I'm in need of a mentor so I'm going to try everyone. There are some people who really show signs that who, who are able to help you. And I remember one of the things that really motivated me uh, to join Caleb. Uh, there was a, 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 a new a company, a new company in Rwanda that was led by um, two Americans who had written an article about uh, what really comes after education, and they were they were saying that it, education is very important, but you cannot learn how to swim by reading a book. So that really got me uh, attached to these people. I started chasing them down. And at the end of the day, they are my favorite mentors that I've met throughout the course of my entrepreneurship journey. Um, I think I have a lot to share, but I cannot keep this myself. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Jean. I think uh, if I save a quickly, um, uh, Jean Claude, uh, you you say you need to get paid to pass on some of these. Uh, as, you know, uh, lessons to other guys. Um, yes, Jeff. Uh, Jeff from Huya is asking. You know, could you please come and give a more detailed public lecture, and hopefully you'll not charge. So, uh, in the meantime, you can think about your your, your free strategy uh, to share this. Uh, but quickly, uh, Sylvia, please ex explain more on the mentorship, uh, because there was a lot of feedback from on, on that. Uh, the workload of the lecturers vis-a-vis -vis the availability uh, sorry vis-a-vis -vis the availability to provide mentorship okay so uh, to me we always need a start so the system has started has been established at the beginning we don't expect everything to be perfect but we need to get feedback from you and from the lecturers of this system. Once the university gets feedback, we'll see how to improve the mentorship. So this comment is noted, and I'm sure that they are working on it, because this is very important for the university, for even to this also will, en will allow us the university to meet its goal. So this is my comment. I, w I would like to talk about, uh, you talked about uh, internship and practice. It is true that at the university we learn more theory. But that is also important. Oh. Okay. This theory is very important. You cannot practice something you don't have an idea about. And we do believe that maybe the number of hours allocated to practical is not enough. And this can be revised by academician. So about, uh, you talk, someone asks to start the internship from the first year. So I'm also a lecturer at the first year to start an internship. I'm afraid that even where you go to do the internship, they won't be able to train you because you'll be missing some theoretical skills. So we need now to know to adjust that. But starting from first year, it's quite difficult. But I do agree that you need exposure. And the university, I don't know the status of Huye, but I know at Nyarugenge campus, every week we have a public lecture. We have professors who come and give talk. And this is how we connect you students to those people. When is a, the, the public lecture you attend, and then you can get business card. This is how the connection starts. So I think I would like to ask you to attend those public lectures. 
them there on Friday afternoon of Wednesday. So this is what the university has implemented. So we get people, they come, they talk, and then students are always invited. But it seems when you go in those uh, public lectures, you find that the attendance of students is very low. Maybe they are not informed, but we used to inform them. I don't know what the problem. So I would recommend that any opportunity that is given by the university, you just grab it instead of waiting for something that will come late, will come from outside. Another thing is uh, about, um, I would like to inform you that this is the government part, that the government is working to see why there is that gap, why students, when they leave the university, are not employed, are not directly employed. Because on the other hand, industry will, it, industry is claiming that you give us students, but we need to invest again to train them. So the National Capacity Building is planning to make a study to see why there's that gap, why there's gap between university and the public sector. And once that is done, the university will be more guided to improve the way curricula is done. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think uh, we, we, are, we, we are running short of time. Um, but quickly again on, on what Rachel mentioned. I think it's important on what Sylvia has just mentioned uh, to create synergies between the, the students uh, and, 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 and the private sector and the companies. Um, personally, the company that I work for has a corporate social responsibility element where we get students who have just completed university we take them through a three months to six months internship period and sometimes it translates into a job so we get to hire you uh, but in other cases we feel that we have given you enough skills uh, to do to do your own next step so I think that 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 discussion has to be had with the private sector federation and see how we introduce that um, element of corporate social responsibility to each and every company uh, I think each company should be able to allocate a certain amount of its resources, be it time or, 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 its, or its revenues, towards giving back uh, to the community. Uh, you mentioned public lectures. I'm coming back to you on, on, on the free public lecture that you're going to offer uh, to the students at Huye. Uh, so please let us know when that will happen uh, and just confirm on air that you will not be charging for this public lecture. Thank you very much. Um... You're right. I'm 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 free, and I want to, <laughs> and I want to tell that man in the corner <laughs> that I'm free. If uh, really that can be organised and we get that opportunity to share with our our young colleagues, uh, with what we have, you can give some directions of where you go and how you start the challenges, the common challenges that you can meet and how you can overcome them. Uh, I think people are, you know, we are willing to build this nation. It's our country. So if you get that system organized between maybe the, the, the public institutions or the, the government institutions, uh, as we come here in this panel, we can be able also to go and, uh, and, uh, and share our experiences. But also, I had you uh, trying to conclude like the talk. It's like this is an opportunity for me just to market myself a little bit. Uh, I want to, to, to tell those people that uh, I'm free and I can offer services and those people online who can follow this talk that I'm an expert in uh, media and communications and I'm able to do like this live streaming that you're here, you, you're seeing here, this uh, all of our work. And um, if you want me to be your mentor, uh, or this one to be a mentor if it's feeling all right, if you want to be to be your mentor, uh, maybe the organizer of this uh, talk can give you my contacts and I'm willing to share my experiences. Thank you very much. I think I've shared what I have. Thank you. I think we'll, we'll go straight to Jean. Just uh, in about 10 seconds, just give us your last word uh, while, while we wrap up this, this hangout session. Uh, all right. Uh, so um, I think uh, the, the thought that I want to leave with everyone is that uh, entrepreneurship is uh, 
it is a system itself in place and uh, you have to make sure that you have processes that has uh, have input and output uh, I myself uh, I grew up with this spirit, and I probably got this from my family, where uh, you have to work for your, for you, and then if you are able to complete that, then start working for your family. Make sure your family is safe. After you have completed that and it, it is in place, then look out for your country. Work for your country and make sure your country can prosper. And then maybe in your late uh, 50 years, 60 years, then you are able to do something for the entire humanity. So I think I am really eager to keep following that and see uh, where that is going. But I really, if I if I'm not able to do it, I really want to see someone else be being able to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Uh, Sylvia. Oh. Ten seconds. Your last word. Uh, what today? So. I would like to recommend you that when this is the chance you have when you are young, if you don't shape your future now, don't accept, uh, expect to shape it when you'll be 40 years old. And this is the time to take risk. At least at this age, you can take a risk and then you have time to correct mistakes that you have done. This is not the case when you are old. So anything you have in mind, make it be real. This is your time to dream. Allow yourself to dream and then forget about risks. And we are open. So myself and for others, for my colleagues. So I don't think that if a student comes to you with a problem, you just shut down, shut the door and go. No. We are open and don't be discouraged. If you find someone is not available today, maybe tomorrow he will be available. So use those, that energy. Don't... So use the, your energy. You're still young. You have time to do things. You are strong. So use it and then you'll be rewarded at the end. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Sylvie. I think um, uh, before I move on to, to our host, I'm going to ask maybe the our friends from Huya to give us the last word, and then we'll wrap up with our host from the Ministry of Youth and ICT. So if there's uh, one of our friends from, from Huya, can just give us maybe 10 seconds or 20 seconds, uh, the last word. Uh, thank you so much, panelists, moderator, for your ideas, experience, and everything that you've shared with us related to ICT and, and entrepreneurship. Uh, I think because of the time, you've seen that my fellow intellectuals, they have a lot to share with you. They've got the burning ideas, problems, related to ICT and entrepreneurship. I don't know if you allow us for the next team to be with us, but we've got a lot of ideas within us and the problems. Uh, but all in all, we thank you for that, for the time offered to us. Thank you so much, everyone who has participated in uh, this session for its success to, a, to the end. Thank you so much. Um, I think that's it. We welcome you for any time where you think you can need us. We are always there because we are youth and we want to develop ICT worldwide. Uh, we would want us to we would want you to give us your contacts, if you don't mind. Each of you, thank you yes, so much. Yes, we will do that. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Gordon from the Ministry of Youth and ICT. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, comment about and some banners about Transform Africa. So I want to ask him what that is about and what the takeaway is for the youth while he. Uh, chases us out of this out of this hangout. 
Thank you so much uh, again, uh, Martin. And thank you so much uh, for the people from here. Uh, I would say you're part of us. You're part of this journey. We have no journey without you. That's what I can say. Now, um, regarding you mentioned of Transform Africa, maybe I would extend the invitation. You may have seen uh, we have this big event which is coming uh, from 19th to 21st. Now, there is a session call, uh, on Youth Connect Africa. Now, this is an extension of the will and commitment of the government and stakeholders to always uh, uh, elevate the power of the youth uh, in using ICT. So this session uh, is going to be covering lots of series. There is an exhibition where you will be able to meet young innovators. Uh, there is uh, uh, a session uh, called the Champion Bus. It's a bus that moves across East Africa and it's going to be having our um, uh, what I would call competent young innovators who have already attained something to, and they are ready to share ideas and leave their ideas in Rwanda. So it's just a bus that keeps moving and uh, next week it's going to be alive in, in Rwanda. And this is going to be again uh, a session, <coughs> importantly, on uh, face the gorillas. Now it's not the usual gorillas we know. The goal is these now are the potential investors uh, and they are like, uh, we call them uh, guardian angels, the angel investors. So now this is where uh, the young innovators pitch and they face uh, the potential uh, investors. When your idea is good, trust me, you don't come back with your idea. Somebody takes it and the next thing you see is a call. And so uh, we strongly recommend that you Follow. We've invited close to 500 uh, students uh, from all the universities. I hope probably you're part of what's going to be, who is going to be coming. Uh, even if you don't make it, this is going to be online, live from uh, all the streams uh, on YouTube. It's going to be online on televisions and radio stations. So please make it a point to have a moment and follow the youth, at least the youth component, if, if not really the entire Transform Africa, because it's all about ICT. Um, lastly, I would say, you asked me for my last word. One of my last words was to say that we have, as the government, as the Minister of Youth, I said, we have no journey without you. It's a quote. Lastly, I would say that uh, let's please try to harness these opportunities. I will qualify this to allude to what Sylvester said. He said that let's try and start from now to shape our future. And I want to load the challenge and leave the challenge. When you go back to your hostels, when you go back to your bedrooms, by tomorrow morning, can we all have at least the top three strategies that you think should be your exit strategy to success. If you still have mixed ideas and you don't know your, your, where you're going, seek, seek guidance, look for a mentor around there, there. But ideas do not cost anything. And it's ideas that translates into success. Thank you so much. And as the ministry, we remain committed to be with you in the journey that we can't have without you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Gordon. I think my last word is going to be very short. Um, is just to promise to bring uh, the gentleman to speak in this public lecture. Uh, I'll make sure if you guys can organize, uh, I'll carry him on my back and bring him, uh, as well as Jean and, and any other panelist who wants to come uh, to have this uh, further discussion with you. So thank you very much. Uh, you've been with us on the Youth Hangout, Youth Connect Hangout, uh, live from the Ministry of Youth and ICT, and uh, together with our friends from, from Huye, uh, thank you very much, and have a great evening. Excuse me. Uh, yes, we, we wanted the numbers, your contacts. Uh, okay, I think uh, our contacts will be passed on to you through uh, uh, through Gordon, through the Gordon? Ministry of and ICT. Yes, Gordon, uh, the gentleman to my left, will pass on our contacts okay, to you. Okay. Yes, thank you, so thank much. you very much. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.